Thank you, Professor Germoff, and can I congratulate all of you on very responsible cheering and clapping. <laughs> uh, I now have great pleasure in inviting Patrick Norman, who graduated earlier with a Bachelor of Teaching Secondary, Bachelor of Arts with Honours Class 1 in Teaching and the University Medal, to speak on behalf of the graduates. Patrick. <laughs> So, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellors, members of the Council, staff of the University, families and friends of graduates, and most importantly, graduates of the Bachelors of Teaching, Primary, Secondary, Early Childhood. What a thrill it is to speak to a room of people so obviously driven by the care of others. And I want to first say thank you to all who have supported us to get here today, um, in the audience and beyond. Learning is a difficult process, and we could not have got to this point without you. So, I mean, a round of applause for all the people who have got us here. So it seems customary in graduation speeches to borrow the words of better minds in order to make your own words sound more significant. I'm an English teacher and since all creativity is an act of theft, an idea which I've also stolen, perhaps it's best that I begin by quoting Steinbeck. I've come to believe that a great teacher is a great artist and that there are as few as there are any other great artists. Teaching might even be the greatest of the arts, since the medium is the human mind and spirit. We are gathered here today in a stunning campus on the beautiful Central Coast, because today marks the end of a long apprenticeship as artists of the human mind and spirit. Tomorrow we go out, go out with a piece of paper that says, congratulations, you finished it. Now you're qualified to change the world. Because whether we realise it or not, that's what we've been studying. From day one in EDUC 1008 for most of us, the message is clear, teachers make a difference. Another act of creative theft from Professor John Hattie. From day one, we learned about learning and we became better learners ourselves. From day one, we made friends with our fellow artists, some who are not present today because they've already taken their craft to other places throughout Australia and across the globe. From day one, we saw in our teachers many of whom I see here today, smiling away, as always, some from our first year who are no longer at the university, that there is a fundamental quality to the teacher artist that drives their creativity every day. Passion. It is passion for learning, for teaching, for changing the lives of the people around us for the better that keeps us on a determined path for good. It is passion that keeps creativity and kindness alive in an aching, pragmatic, indifferent world. And it's passion that reminds us of the value of our art, that it gives rise to future generations of artists and teachers and engineers and writers and doctors and nurses and mothers and fathers and entertainers and free spirits and so on. In short, it is the vocation of a teacher to bring to the world all those things that give life meaning. Human beings gather knowledge faster than we gather wisdom. And it's my hope for everyone here today that we take our years of accumulated knowledge and apply them to the pursuit of wisdom. Spreading our knowledge, developing that wisdom, taking our art and using it to create opportunities for young minds, these are our duties now. And there are so many who need that opportunity. There are the children who are living in Tennant Creek or Broken Hill, remote and far from the resources of our wealthy cities. There are the children sitting in mainstream classes in need of a little extra help to process a mainstream world through their remarkable eyes. The children whose creativity we need to enable as a community are the kids who can't see with their eyes, but who are able to perceive a world of sound and touch in a way more profound and beautiful than we could possibly imagine. The young Picasso who scribbles on cardboard because his parents can't afford an easel. The Aboriginal students whose cultural history and communion with our natural environment transcends modern tragic arguments about climate and economy. Opportunity tends to follow material wealth. We don't need to focus our attention on giving people with wealth choice. We need to offer opportunity to those children for whom choice is a dream. Because opportunity doesn't always follow imagination. And imagination is hidden everywhere, waiting for us to find it and unlock the next great artist. The University of Newcastle and its amazing staff has given us the key to that lock. We've learned about compassion and care, about challenging young minds and nurturing young souls. We've explored the capacity for education to empower and to transform, and it's empowered and transformed us. And so on and out we go, ripples in an ocean, each to do nothing less than change the world in our own unique and special way. 
to meet other ripples, to make waves, to change something or someone, to improve the lives of those we teach. To borrow the words of Arundhati Roy, another world is not only possible, she is on her way. And on a quiet day at Arimba, beautiful sunny day, if you listen very carefully, you can hear her breathing. Congratulations to all graduates. We did it. Now let's do this. <laughs>